Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Friday Sit Rep. This week features the Focke-Wulf 189 along with the SDKFZ 251-B and the T18M on pre-order, as well as a couple of new releases including the KFZ4 and a standalone patent in Little Willy minifig. So let's head on into the design room and take a closer look at this week's lineup. Okay, so we're checking in once again with Brennan because we have the Focke-Wulf 189 designed by Josta11 to take a look at. And look at this, guys. Our, our test printer, our, our prototype printer, is already starting to get some of the printed elements included onto these prototype models. So even though the, the 189 is just now available on pre-order, you can already get a look at some of the awesome printed elements that are going to be included with this thing. So Brennan, take it away. Tell me a little bit more about what we got here. Well, um, this is a really funky plane that I never expected we were going to get to put on our line. Um, I knew about it for the longest time. It's a really funky German uh, reconnaissance plane. Effective, too, from what I understand. Yeah, yeah, you've got, uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to see through all of this, mm -hmm. but that would all be glass, and so you've got your your three-man crew. It, it's technically a three-man crew, fits two a lot better. Right, two than, minifigures, uh, three people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but this whole front is made of glass, and so you can see out and, and around you very well, including below, because you've got the glass directly below the pilot. Sure. So he can see everything. It's an artillery spotter. It's um, just a regular old reconnaissance plane. And he, I think even later in the war, they, they swapped out this, this mostly glass canopy for a really armored two-man cockpit kind of centered in here. Okay. And just gave it a ton of firepower in the front, just a bunch of cannons and machine guns and whatnot, so ground strike. Very cool. Um, but this is much earlier. This is... I think this plane flew through the entirety of the war. Mm -hmm. um, so it was very, very early on. Uh, late 30s to the... all the way to 45. Um, and as you mentioned, we've got a lot of really cool printing on here. We've got... I can't remember exactly what uh, the reconnaissance unit we have here. Mm -hmm. But we've got the, the flying tank. We thought that was kind of fun. Absolutely. Um, we've got some fuel caps on the top, mm -hmm. uh, just for a little extra detail. We've got the lovely Belkenkreutz on either side. Cross element. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Whoops. Bump. Yep. <laughs> of either, either side of the boom, as well as the other recon uh, insignia. Mm-hmm. And Boy, that's looking real good. In this cockpit, I don't know how well you can see it. I might have to open it up for you. But we've got a lovely little printed canopy uh, instrument panel. Oh, I see. It's on the it's on the flip side of the canopy. Yeah, that, that's a little tough to see, but we'll get a B-roll shot of it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Show it off. And Very that's, cool. That's exactly what it does. It hangs up above the pilot instead, so mm -hmm. you maintain that visibility on the ground. Mm -hmm. Makes things a lot easier, so you keep it up and out of the way. Boy, that's a cool integration into into Lego. That couldn't have been easy to do to be able to make it make room for a printed element on there, especially when you're working with all those canopy connections. Exactly. Yeah, it's nutty. Um, and technically, if you wanted to fit three minifigs in here, you could. It would be very squished, and that instrument panel would be right up in his face. <laughs> but you can fit one guy sitting here, one guy facing back using the mm -hmm. spare machine, and then we have one man laying prone in this back element here with this really funky looking. Look turret. how cool that is. It and would, that's made to represent three different machine guns on the tail uh, tail gunner, correct? Uh, no, it is a single gun. Single gun, it is okay. A, the, the revolver is meant to denote the gun, and it would kind of point down, but this, this mimics exactly what it would do. He could crank it around, turn it up, and fire upwards, but mostly it's pointing down at the ground, and you've got this guy more as your tail gunner. Got it, thing. got it. Okay, cool. So, Yeah. Well, it's a really funky plane. Yeah, and not to mention it's got another awesome camo scheme. We've been seeing some of those out of, out of Josta 11, just putting them together. They look really, really sharp. So there you have it. Still in its prototype phase, but a little bit of, a little bit of printing to show off here as well. The Focke Wolf 189, now available on pre-order. Brendan, thanks for checking in. All right, we're checking in once again with Mary because we've got another Comrade Kadia model to uh, take a little closer look at here. This is the T-18M, which is a Soviet light tank. And once again prototype model with some printing on it already. We can see our cross element red star and then this viewport in the front. And I think it's got a grill in the back too. Uh, yeah, so there's a grill in the back that they're actually like nice. the same print, but they line up so it like goes across, which is mm -hmm. really nice. Um, and we also have these- Oh, um, the wheels, yeah. Yeah, wheels. So like this part only comes in uh, black, but it's like such the perfect, it's a great part for it. Mm -hmm. It makes a very great canvas as well. We've been printing a lot of these in various models but 
Um, yeah, the pr I just love seeing the printing on the prototype phase. Like, yeah. It makes me so happy. I think the ninjas appreciate it. The ninjas appreciate <laughs> it. They're not, they're not the only exciting thing, like mm -hmm. exciting color going on. So, yeah, but Katya did a great job with this tank. Um, she used a lot of very interesting, uh, like, build, like, techniques inside, mm -hmm. especially with this upper hull. Like, I, it's all built so it's, like, studs out on either side, mm -hmm. but, like, this still connects well, when you build it you'll see you'll be impressed it's it's really clever she did, cool. a, she did a really good job with that and also like getting this angle in here like especially mm -hmm. with like this viewport um so we could print that and mm -hmm. then it's just like it's very like seamless going all together but yeah another like very little tank another like <laughs> yeah. tank yes. that i've worked on recently so. <laughs> lots of small chassis <laughs> yeah um and like the the treads are so smooth mm -hmm. and um this the this back portion like she wanted to add like she, she really likes to add like these little details shovels like and stuff shovels yeah and right like absolutely the, every everything that she can on there so i think it turned out really well it's i think so too small tank to add to your collection mm -hmm. yeah it definitely fits the theme well so it's got the 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 upgunned 45 millimeter cannon because that's what it would, they would have been outfitted with in in 1941 but other than other than this ninja here you're pretty much looking at what the complete kit will be Minus the minifig that you're that you're gonna get with it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're gonna get a great custom minifig, um, and that has like a new newish 3D printed helmet as well. So very very cool. It's gonna be a great kit. So there you have it, the T18M now available on pre-order. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, thank you so much for checking in. All right, so we're checking in once again with Nate because we're taking a look at a John Canapa model. This is the SDKFZ 251-B and look at all this printing once again on a prototype model this one has a lot to show off too yeah so aside from the dishes this is this has all the printing on it okay so we're still waiting on those but there is a lot jam-packed in this small little build one you can fit a bunch of guys mm -hmm. the shaping all around this is phenomenal mm -hmm. i have not seen a sdkz 251 look this good in a long time it's got the accurate widths too, because I believe our old ones were eight studs wide. This one's actually seven studs wide, but okay. it probably should be. Uh, let me remove this guy. You can put all your tools on the side. Mm -hmm. There's a function to actually open the doors on the back. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, this is very, really clever. Oh, not to mention, you can fit a driver in there as well. Up front, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. Okay. Yep. That front part comes off pretty easily, from what it seems. Yep. Uh, from what I can tell, you, from from me uh, playing around with this, you can fit about five minifigs in here. Okay. If you want to try and cram more, be my guest. Yeah, but sure. A, a safe estimate is five: one driver and four guys in here. Mm -hmm. uh, in the real one, they kind of crammed like a lot of guys in here, but it was you know really crammed because it's a small space. So mm -hmm. You got to count for minifig weirdness as well, but yeah. Well, and I really love how the front came together with yeah, that printing. Front, is, is super impressive. Oh, yeah. We tried to figure out how to do this because it's supposed to go all the way here, but we mm -hmm. did a pretty good job of it. I think so. And, Frank, and again, the shaping is phenomenal. Yeah, really, really well done. Yeah, this is probably one of my favorite kits this year so far mm -hmm. just because how it looks accurate. So there is one minifigure included, but you do yeah. also have the option to upgrade to add two more mechanized infantry minifigs to your uh, to your crew should you want to should you want to include them. Yes, yeah, so this does come with one uh, minifig. It's um, a German mechanized infantry mm -hmm. uh, NCO, and like you said, there are optional Germans that will be sold alongside it, possibly if you're interested. Very very cool. Well, there you go. You get a nice look at these uh, the printing available. Obviously, still in prototype phase, but we are moving forward with it. So the new SDKFZ 251-B designed by John Canapa. Thank you very much for checking in, Nate. Hi. All right, so we're doing our first check-in here at Tasha's desk because we have a KFZ-4 with anti-aircraft mounts to take a look at. Already got some minifigures for this kit as well because it is not a pre-order. This is actually releasing right now and available to ship. So we've got all of our printed elements. Tasha, tell us a little bit more about what we're, uh, what we're working with here. Sure, yeah. So all of the printed elements you see here will be on the kit. Um, my favorite part is this canvas. Um, yeah. Part. I think it really pulls the whole thing together. Um, Slam did a great job with that. A lot of paper prototyping it turned out great. Um, we have some printing on the fenders here. The shovel's covering that a little bit, but it's You can see there. it on the other side. Yep. Um, and then not one, but two um, NG-34s on this twin anti-aircraft mount here that swivels. 
Love to see the motion in that. Yeah, absolutely. You got and that printed site there on the end too. Yep, right there. And then you've got the uh, license plate plate on the bumper, the fuel can printing there, and some side printing on the doors there as well. These also open up, put your guys in there. Nice. Comfortably, probably seats one, but you can squish them too. Yeah, right. And obviously it includes too many figs because you need somebody out back where running the uh, the anti-aircraft right. mount, right? Yeah, right. exactly. Yep. You can stick a minifig right back there as well. And yeah, look at look at the front here too. This looks really great with the two headlights. Oh yeah, I didn't even and, notice that. Yep. Um, yeah, really great build. I really like how it came together and turned out. Definitely an excellent kit, one that I think is going to be very, very popular for people prepping their uh, Barbarossa convoys or pretty much any any uh, early war uh, setup there. So that's that's very, oh, very yeah. cool. Those are the two minifigures. This is the kit. Once again, it is available right now to ship. Tasha, thanks so much for checking in. Thanks. All right, so we're back at the desk of Landon because we've got a standalone Blood and Guts minifigure. Yes, it's General Patton and Little Willie available now standalone officially sponsored, officially in partnership with the Patton Museum Foundation. Either way, we got a standalone Patton minifigure and it looks awesome. Tell me a little bit more about what we're looking at here, man. Yeah, that's first off, that's super exciting that we're actually, you know, working with uh, the Patton Museum on this project. So that's that's uh, really awesome. Um, this would have been kind of like a post-war, super late war, or yeah, post-war um, kind of uh, depiction of, uh, of Patton. Um, he's got his four-star helmet there. It, um, he had a really glossy one in sure. some of the photos, and I'm trying to depict that. So it, in real life, it probably would have been a really, really dark olive drab, but black is almost, this Brick Arms black helmet is, a, is kind of a, I thought, almost more close than... Captures that shine. Yeah, trying mm -hmm. to. That's the goal. Um, and then that thing, yeah, so the four stars on top there. Um, got that kind of stern look to his face. Yeah, uh, as absolutely. If he's, as if he's uh, addressing a lot of troops or, mm -hmm. you know, um, just yeah, addressing a lot of people. Um, and on that note, he's wearing uh, the dual pistol setup. So I think usually when he was out with the troops, he probably was just carrying one pistol. But mm -hmm. uh, he was known to carry two, especially when he's addressing a lot of people to kind of show off that. Um, military authority that he had. Yeah, sure. That definitely sounds like his uh, his colorful personality, yeah. so to speak. So, um, dual pistols with those uh, ivory grip handles. He's noted for that. So it's the three fifty seven Magnum that's Smith and Wesson, mm -hmm. and then not um, a Colt, right? Yeah, Colt forty five. So both of them were, were revolvers. Um, like he, he was he was a uh, he very much so preferred revolvers over those the autos mm -hmm. the automatic 19, he was issued in 1911 didn't like it <laughs> uh, there's yeah some stories associated with that very but, particular so yeah he, he thought uh the revolver was a more true and pure firearm compared to mm -hmm. yeah um yes anyways <laughs> um he's wearing his I mean, it's, a, it's a formal uniform um i mean probably specifically tailored to him i think there's some there's that jacket's a little bit reminiscent of that British battle dress, yeah. um, but then uh, kind of its own tailoring to it. Um, very sharp. He's got that, again, pistol belt going all the way around with that buckle. Mm -hmm. On the back, you see some uh, some individual oh, cool. yeah, ammo that. right there for the pistols. That is phenomenal. <laughs> is that, that's got to be new artwork then, right, for that? You know, that's, that's, uh, uh, we had a sticker pack in a magazine a while ago. Okay, so cool. This, but so I think this is the first time debuting on, on, on a printed on a figure, mm -hmm. so yeah. Um, oh, it looks great. Thank you. Yeah, the jacket's got a little bit of color shifting going on to uh, sort of like a, a really good olive color to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then moving down, he's wearing these these uh, riding breeches or jodhpurs, you know, officer pants. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of like, you know, they, they poop out on the sides um, and uh, going down into the riding boots. And so that was another thing he was just iconic for. Um, right, he those, loved horses. Those, yeah, these big riding boots, uh, buckles on the on the front off the side, and um, really gets that that uh, you know uh, professional look to it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, definitely a, a very in interesting uh, loadout here. That I mean, if you saw this guy up on stage talking, like you, you probably would listen to this you, guy. You wouldn't so. be you wouldn't be talking or snickering yeah. throughout his speech. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, some more markings on the sleeve there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we're moving on to the dog. Check yes, that out. little Willie, look at this. <laughs> so in, in the sitting position in, with the tank, I think there's the standing version of this right, guy. That is exclusive to the Patton Sherman. So yes. the, the little Willie from the uh, standalone is the is this sitting version. But man, what a cool, cool piece yeah. to just take this to the next level. Um, 
so that's uh, you know designed in house by Amanda M and Art Girl on Instagram, mm-hmm. and then uh, some additional um, printing UV printing on the face to get right. that kind of uh, you know coloration right of the uh, the, the snout there mm-hmm. and, and the eyes and everything. Uh, really adorable, <laughs> and I think uh, I think it uh, at, on this display stand here. Uh, really iconic piece um, that I think uh, you know. I'm gonna have this guy on my desk for a while for sure. So. Yeah, this is definitely a, a staple, absolutely in the uh, in the collector vein. So something that uh, we're we're excited to uh, have continuing moving forward, and I'm sure will be immensely popular for uh, for well the uh, the days to come. So Landon, thanks for checking in, man, and we appreciate the fig. All right, let's hear a little bit more about the history behind the actual vehicles that inspired these Brickmania models. All right, kicking things off with the Focke-Wulf 189 entering service in 1940. The Focke-Wulf 189 was a massive success as a reconnaissance aircraft. The extensive use of glass canopies made for more accurate observations and quicker communication between crew. Even more impressive with the plane's durability. Throughout Operation Barbarossa, Focke-Wulf 189s found themselves in the crosshairs of Soviet anti-aircraft guns, but many managed still, return, still to return to base, sometimes with just one tail boom. As aircraft advanced, the Focke-Wulf 189 was redelegated to a night reconnaissance role with 846 produced by mid-1944. After the war, General Paul Dykman, I hope I'm saying that right, was quoted as saying, of the tactical reconnaissance aircraft used by the Luftwaffe, the Focke-Wulf 189 was nearest to the ideal. All right, moving on to the SDKFZ 251-B. A staple of German mechanized infantry, the SDKFZ 251 was used as a basis for more than 20 specialized vehicles, with the base design going through several refinements throughout production history. Early variants were armed with a forward and rear-mounted MG34 and offered solid protection against small arms and some varied protection from artillery. The strategy behind the SDKFZ was that it would protect mobile infantry and allow them to support the rapid pace of the German advance, a task at which it excelled. However, there were never enough to go around. The Ausf B arrived in 1940 with over 500 taking part in the invasion of France. Moving on to the T-18M, an evolved design of the T-16, the T-18 featured upgraded suspension, engine, and tracks. The 37mm M28 made gun was very effective against entrenched enemy positions initially, and some were later upgraded in 1941 to sport a 45mm main gun featured on the T-26 to become the T-18M. In tank versus tank combat, the T-18 did not fare well, but with the addition of the 45mm gun to some 200 tanks in July of 1941, the upgunned but outdated T-18Ms did what they could to counter the rapid German advance during Operation Barbarossa. Moving on to the KFZ-4 with twin anti-aircraft mount, at the start of Operation Barbarossa, control of the skies was critical. Axis and Soviet forces grappled to disrupt each other's supply lines and keep their troops on the ground supported. The German KFC-4 was a light 4x4 car that had a twin anti-aircraft mount as one of its variants. These cars helped provide light, mobile anti-aircraft protection to infantry units and vehicles. Last but certainly not least, General Patton, commander of the U.S. 7th Army in the Mediterranean theater of World War II and the U.S. 3rd Army in France and Germany after the Allied invasion of Normandy in June 1944. He became famous, or well, he became a military icon for his colorful personality and courageous antics, earning him, earning him nicknames like Bandito and Old Blood and Guts. And if you haven't, I would highly recommend you check out the movie with George C. Scott because it is, a, it is an excellent film. So there you have it, the Friday lineup. All right, well, that will do it for this Friday sit rep. Remember, we have our 1941 mock contest still going strong, along with a whole bunch of new arrivals in our retail stores. So if you're near one of those, make sure to go check it out. Otherwise, we'll see you on Monday.